We turn to our call to worship with congregational response. Rejoice, the stone is rolled away. Grave clothes neatly folded. No more the smell of death. Behold the empty tomb. Rejoice, scripture has been fulfilled. The sting of death is gone. The victory has been won. Behold the risen Christ. Rejoice, the curtains torn in two. Our God invites you in. Christ sacrifice enough to wash away our sins. Let us turn to God and sing to his praise in hymn number 410, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Welcome to Broomhill Highland Parish Church this morning, both here in our kirk and also the service being streamed this morning to those in their homes and houses. So, as always, not only did we say good morning to each other this morning, but as you know, it's Easter Sunday, so please turn round to those near and far, get up, give them a wee Easter cuddle <laughs> from a distance and say, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Tell you what, don't get up then. <laughs> well, that's a good. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> 
A glance at the intimations for you this morning. At the close of worship, tea fellowship will be served in the large hall. All are welcome afterwards. A reminder to you that this Sunday the service will be streamed if you prefer not to be within that particular range of camera, you can sit in what is my left-hand side of the church. Can I say a big thank you to all who supported our Holy Week services and our dawn service this morning. According to uh, those who can count better than me, so that's probably most of you, we had a roundabout the 70, 80 mark, or well, probably all the way through till we got to Monday Thursday. We're in the 90 odds in Monday Thursday, 80 odds in Good Friday, and nearly 50 this morning at the dawn service. It was round about 50. It became 51 when Stuart came for the breakfast. <laughs> but not the service. <laughs> So thanks to all, from Jill who produced the booklet for us for Holy Week, to our door duty team, to our communion team who, who also sorted out Monday Thursday for us, and to the breakfast this morning, to everyone who has made Holy Week a, a special journey, whether coming once, a few times, or every night, my thanks to you all. Mary's Meal Brunch by the Junior Church are inviting you to join them at their annual fundraising brunch taking place after morning worship next Sunday, the 16th of April. So you come to Sunday morning service and then we help and support Mary's Meals with a brunch afterwards. For your diary as well, Christian Aid Plant Sale takes place, believe it or not, on the 20th of May. We're halfway through April almost already. Uh, so please, volunteers are needed for various tasks. Speak to Amanda, but you can't because Amanda's flying out to Crete, to Crete. How dare she? <laughs> I will be off work for the next few days, um, so there won't be a full order of service next Sunday, and there'll be no postal distribution. Our organist, Razvan, is organising a concert called Highlights of Eastern European Music on Saturday the 29th of April at half past seven, not half past one as it says in the printed copies in Naseby Park. Tickets are only £10 in advance or at the door. Posters are also displayed in other parts of the church. Last intimation for you, for those of you who came to Holy Week at some point, I don't know whether you were aware there was a flower display on our communion table. But each night, part of the flower display changed. Were you aware of that? No. no. You weren't really paying attention, were you? <laughs> yeah. Each night, uh, Linda took part of the flower display away to try and encourage you to see the symbolism as we got nearer and nearer to Good Friday. And by the time Good Friday was here, there was nothing round about but only the cross and the crown of thorns. So, I was going to give you the trouble there for, for not paying attention, but thanks to Linda for the, the symbolism that was also created during, during Holy Week as well. I think these are all the intimations for you this morning. Let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. On Easter Day, we join together to celebrate the mystery of resurrection. The angel declares he is not here, he is risen, to the women who came to anoint his body. We still do not understand the great mystery of Easter, and yet we believe that the tomb was empty, and that now Jesus is here, he is no longer confined to a body. He is everywhere all the time. Like the women, we doubt the angel's words. We are afraid. What does this mean? So we come seeking solace and reassurance from God, our parent, our maker, 
the one who loves us so much and longs for us to come to love in return. We come humbly before you, risen Lord, aware of our faults and failings and asking you for forgiveness for those times when we have said or acted in a way that was not so loving. Parent God, help us to know that your love for us is so deep that there is nothing we can do to change it. Your Son has shown us and asked us to believe, so help our unbelief. Transform us and send us out into the world to share the good news that Jesus Christ is not here, he is risen. We make our prayers through Jesus our Lord and in his words saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to sing once more one of the hymns we sang this morning where some of you were resting. We were, along with Stuart. <laughs> this is going to go on the whole morning. Songs of God's People, number 55, Jesus is Lord. certainly wasn't the speed we sang it at this morning, was it? <laughs> well done, Razvan. <laughs> morning, boys and girls. I see there's some boys and girls, some children round about. I'm looking for helpers. I'm looking for, let me think, one, two, three, four, five, six helpers. Who's going to come out before I grab, grab an adult? So, no, adults can't be. Rudy, you coming out? Here's my grandson coming out. Yes, I don't look old enough to have a grandson, I know. <laughs> okay, Rudy, you come. I need five more. Five more, Paul. Yes, there you come. Don't be shy. There you come. Five. Them. Nice to see you. Stop following me about. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's many we've got now. Two. Right, how many more do we need? Four, well done, yes. Two from six is four. Need four more. Four more. Who's going to come out? You coming, Paul? Oh, you fi you're fine, are you? Didn't ask you whether you were fine. We'll take you. What about your big sister? You coming? You're going, you're going to be shy this morning? Okay. 
Right, we're going to be heading for all adults in a second. Or the choir, remember the choir were out a couple of Sundays ago? There's a big choir this morning, look. But we'll get your dad out. Yeah. <laughs> well, bring your dad out. <laughs> you want to bring your dad out as well? Good idea, go and get him. Go and get him. How many is that now, Rory? Four. How many more do we need? Two more. Two more. Two more. Sure, no, yes, how you come in? That's a good girl, sure. <laughs> okay, it's one of these Sundays, okay. We'll take Jill out as well then, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right, what we're going to do, I have the letters of Easter, okay, I'll mix them up, I'm going to put them down on the chancel steps, and then I'm going to read a story, I'm going to read the story of Holy Week, but within that story are the letters of Easter, and you have to find the word I've read and put it together. But what we'll do is then, rather than putting it down in the chancel steps, I'll give you each a letter, okay? And you'll have to make the word up, okay? Now you've got the letter T, Jill, E. You've got two, don't be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got, Rudy? E, okay, that's okay. What's your name? Isaac, well, what a beautiful name. You can have an, an E as well, right? And an A for your dad. Okay, right. So you have to make the word up. So you need to remember what letter you've got, okay? Right. For those of you who missed the Holy Week story, this is the Holy Week story, but it has the word Easter in it, okay? Are you ready? You need to listen for the word and then spell it out. So you need to step forward in the right order, okay? I'm not, the only person that's panicking here is Shona. <laughs> how, how good was your spelling at school? Oh, it wasn't bad. Well, you're okay then. Okay. Are you ready? This is me about to start now. Hold on to your seat. Come back, Rudy. Come back. Rudy. <laughs> you stay there every second, okay? This is going to take a while, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your seat. This is a story from the Middle East. <laughs> and from the era. No, that's ear, Jill. <laughs> when Jesus walked the earth. The Bible tells us of the miracles that Jesus did, the stories Jesus told, and all the things he did that made people stare in amazement. This is the stare, not the tenement stairs, okay? Well done. Paragraph two. <laughs> but not even in Holy Week yet. <laughs> on Palm Sunday, Jesus sat on a donkey. Oh, well done, sure. <laughs> and as they came to Jerusalem, the crowd began to tear leaves. From the trees. and wave them. They shouted that Jesus was a complete star. <laughs> Paragraph three. On Monday, and you know how long holy because on Monday, Jesus sat in the temple. <laughs> a 
and saw those who cheated people who had come to worship by charging them the wrong rates. Rates. More rates. <laughs> Jesus wanted, wanted to reset what had been done. To make God's house a place of prayer, so he threw over the money changing tables. We remember that. On Thursday, we've missed out Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> For obvious reasons. <laughs> On Thursday, Jesus sat down to eat. <laughs> At a special sat, where's the eat? sat down to eat at a special Passover tea. <laughs> with his friends. As they ate, Jesus warned them that one would rat him to the soldiers. One would even say he didn't know Jesus and all of them would then run away. As Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, his friends had a rest. What Stuart had this morning. <laughs> That's Stuart, by the way, at the back. <laughs> Then a sea of soldiers arrived for the arrest. Okay, so we're at Monday, Thursday now, okay? The soldiers depended on Judas to steer them to Jesus. Okay. Jesus' friend Peter drew out his sword and cut off a soldier's ear. He did indeed, yeah. The last healing miracle that Jesus did was to heal the soldier's ear. I thought you might move here. Jesus was out on trial and the people all began to tease him. They wanted him to be killed even though he hadn't done anything wrong. And on Friday, Jesus died on the cross. I know you've got a question, Paul, because you always have a question. Just wait a minute, okay? Three days later, everything changed. No more tears. Just tears of joy. Jesus was alive. His friends could hardly believe what their eyes could see. <laughs> and their ears could hear. And their eyes could see. I just throw, throw that in there. <laughs> For this was the brilliant good news of Easter. <clears throat> well done. What you've done is you've told a story. You've told a story using the letters and the words of this most important day, Easter Sunday. Well done to the young and the slightly older. You can have a wee rest. <laughs> now we're going to have a reading from the New Testament. It's, firstly, it's the reading of the prodigal son, and it's going to be read by Norma. The first Gospel reading is Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 24, and can be found on page 1049 of the Pew Bible. <clears throat> the passage is headed, The Parable of the Lost Son. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. 
Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms round him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. We will now sing hymn 411, Christ the Lord is risen today. Isaac, where are you? I want to come out again. You're becoming one of my paid employees. <laughs> Shouldn't tell you that. What were you going to ask me for? Did I watch the football yesterday? <laughs> no. And I'll tell you why. No, I didn't watch Celtic Rangers. I didn't watch any other game. Why? I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> Didn't watch a thing. No. You'll know why. You should know why. Okay, yes, I've given up TV. <laughs> TV for Lent, yes. After what I watched yesterday afternoon, I've given up a lot of things. <laughs> we'll tell the congregation afterwards. Isaac, hello. 
Thank you for your help, because we told the, the whole week's story with you and your dad and adults and Rudy as well. Okay, now, you can help me again. What we did was we went over the story of Holy Week on the Monday. We started with Palm Sunday, that was last Sunday, over the story. And now there's one little bit we've still got to do. Right, and we're going to play a wee game first, and then I'll tell you what that, that last bit of the story is all about. It's a wee game we've played before with, with other children, so you'll be able to play it too. We're going to play I Spy, okay? I'll give you, you know how to play I Spy? Right, for example, if I said I spy with my little eye, something beginning with S, and you, you turned around and you went, oh, Stuart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we all know where Stuart is. He's actually famous, so we're not, let's not slag him too much. Okay, right, you want, to, you want me to start or do you want to start? I, I can start, okay. Right. I, start, I spy with my little eye, something beginning with L. Lamp? Where's the, where's the lamp? Show me the lamp. Yeah, well, I'll give you that. I was going to say light, but you're on, you're on the right lines. Okay, well done. It's your turn. P. Pews? People? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, I spy with my little eye something beginning with C. Have a guess. I don't know. Have, do you see anything beginning with C? That's this that you letter here. You realise, you don't know, maybe I'll advise it. When you tell me the answer, I'll say no because I cheat. <laughs> Church? Church? That's not a bad, that's a very good guess, actually. I was going to say, what else could it be? Let us see. Any other? Chair? It could be a chair. It could be, there's lots of C's about this. The whole, everybody here is called the congregation. That's a big word, okay? These, this here is not actually called, people call it platforms that annoy me, okay? It's actually called a chancel. So, not, so that starts with a C as well, okay? Or communion table. Right, sorry, I'm giving you some answers. I spy my lies, something beginning with I. No, it's an I. Isaac, yes. <laughs> well done. Yes. Indeed. Well done. You spotted yourself. Right, you have another guess. Beginning with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, Z, H, A, B, C, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, C. W. W. Oh. W. Oh. Women. <laughs> okay. Oh, W. Window. Yes. Oh, thanks, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason why I wanted you to try and guess, and because it's about seeing. Now, remember we did the whole, the whole Holy Week story, and people did it really well, putting all the letters together. The last part of the story was really the beginning of today's story, is that Mary went to the tomb, and some of her friends went to the tomb, and when they looked into the tomb, expecting to see Jesus because Jesus had died on the cross, he wasn't there. He had risen. In fact, one Mary goes actually goes into the garden as well and says to a gardener, Do you know what Jesus is? Because I'm looking for him. She was spying in her own way, trying to find out where he was. She wasn't playing I spy the letter J, but that's what she was meaning, she was looking for somebody and he wasn't there. And why Christian people celebrate Easter Sunday today is because he wasn't there. And what we believe in the church, in fact, is that Jesus is now everywhere. So when you play I spy, when you try to spy Jesus now, we would say he's here, he's there, he's everywhere. We can see him in the lives that we lead in churches, and throughout the world, if we look hard enough. Okay? You got that wee message? Thank you for sharing that wee message with me. Thank you, Isaac. I for Isaac. We'll remember that. Be beautiful. Well done. Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> now the choir are going to sing. 
what was it called? Risen on high. And before, as you're doing that, the junior church will head out to any prep. If there's any youngsters who want to go with junior church now and the staff, you can come out at the same time. Because hearts lost to nothing. Yes. Remember in my heart, so. Be quiet. The second gospel reading is Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12, and can be found on page 1061 of the Pew Bible. This passage is headed, Jesus has risen. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified and on the third day be raised again. 
Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of God. Thanks be to him. Thanks, Norma. I will make him an offer he can't refuse. My father taught me many things. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Never hate your enemies. It affects your judgment. Most people know that my favourite film is The Godfather. I've been caught often watching all three on a regular basis and quoting them in general conversation. I've yet to walk about with cotton wool balls in my mouth, even after a visit to the dentist last week, but there's still time. There's still time. So I don't give my children or grandchildren lectures. I say, you disrespect me. <laughs> when someone is troubling me, I talk about a stone in my shoe. Now, there are other famous lines from these films, but this morning I want you to refer back to the parable of the prodigal son, which Norma panicked about why we're reading that this morning, and hopefully you'll understand why. It is a parable that's well known, liked by some and disliked by others, because the son who stayed at home seems to get a raw deal whilst the wayward son parties away and then is accepted back. So the story infuriates many because loyalty and stickability does not seem to be rewarded. We see it in our own lives. You remain faithful to, for example, your car insurance company. And then the company gives the best deals to new clients. The parable is actually about a family. It's a story about a family nav 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 navigating its way through the messiness and disappointments of life, the hurts and betrayals that happen whenever human beings live in relationship with each other. And here comes the other Godfather quote, for this son of mine was dead. He was dead to him. The relationship was dead. And throughout the parable, it's the father who just keeps navigating these fractured relationships. Again and again, he sacrifices his own dignity and his own position in order to bring the family back together, despite their differences. With extravagant love, he keeps pulling his two sons back into a community. He invites them to come together beyond the barriers that they have put between themselves. I think we have, as a country and even a world, underestimated the division caused by the pandemic. Only now are we recovering from the isolation that diminished our capacity where people come together to live together in peace, cherishing these differences as precious gifts that make our lives richer. Our communities are emerging from the pandemic wounded, fractured, weakened, and even less capable 
of nourishing and enriching people in the lives that they were before the pandemic. When you think back to three years ago, yes, there was the joy of the morning walk around the block. Yes, there was the quietness of the road and the air and the appreciation of nature. But then it dawned on us that we needed each other. You need other people to stay on the journey with you. Even when the path goes through rough terrain. You need other people to stay in relationship even when hurts happen because it would be easier to walk away. You stay with it because God keeps meeting you in the place of hurt and the place of brokenness as we discovered in Holy Week in our theme this year. That God keeps pulling you back into relationships with people whom Jesus has changed from strangers and enemies into your brothers and sisters. If there are no churches left to be that kind of community, where will people become the kind of people who are capable of living in peace, cherishing our differences as precious gifts that make our lives the better? We can all can perhaps look back from these three years and maybe before that and say that he or, or she or they are dead to me. They are lost relationships. And we know that some people have absented themselves from our church life. But if we do it well, we can show to others what living in a community of love really means. You and I are here together at this place in this time because there once was a man who had two sons. And the two children have forgotten that their life and their well-being depended upon each other as different though they may be. And what transformed that situation was the father who refused to let either of them stay lost or stay dead in their separation from each other. You and I are here together in this place at this time because the father is relentlessly working in our lives and in our community. Jesus Christ, even now, seeking out the lost ones, the ones who feel they don't fit in anywhere, the ones that feel they don't have a place where they're deeply cherished and loved. God's Holy Spirit is relentlessly working and inviting us and others into community together with Jesus Christ. A community where we all can be healed, all can grow, all can flourish and find that salvation and healing that our souls really long for. He is dead to me. I wonder, after Norma's second reading, that's what the women really thought. Not in the way that we might have chosen to end a relationship through hurt or betrayal, but physically dead. And so they head to the tomb to carry on after the Sabbath when the ritual of preparing the body with spices was due. He is dead to me. You can imagine the thoughts flitting through their minds as the women headed towards the tomb. And maybe thinking, yes, he's dead to me, but he will be alive in my thoughts and my heart and in my prayers and in the places that we have frequented. From the prodigal son, my son was dead, but now he is alive. The crossover of the parable of the prodigal son or the waiting father and God who indeed loses his son, but through the cross and the dead time, as the radio might call it, the death loses its sting. Christ is alive, Christ no longer lost, but found. Today is Easter Sunday, and I'm delighted that you're with us today. In this truly miraculous day where God, through Christ, points to a resurrection that knows no bounds. 
and an eternal kingdom where death is no more. It is on this day. He reminds us that in our own lives, that which was lost has been found. Dead and now alive forevermore. Alleluia. Praise the Lord this Easter day. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. We stand to make our offering. Let us pray. Jesus is not here. He is risen. Lord, receive our offerings. Use them to let the good news of resurrection spread far and wide. Lord, receive all that we offer, our very selves. Help us to be selfless as Jesus was, serving others in love. Your kingdom is here and now. Help us to continue to grow and to build it. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. After hearing the Easter message, our job now is to think of our world, to go back into the communities of our, of our close areas and parishes and cities and further afield and think and work for them. So we turn now to pray to our world, remembering various things closer to heart and further away from the war in Ukraine to the problems in Palestine and Israel even this very day. Let us pray. Jesus is risen. He is not here. The world is once more celebrating and alleluia fill the air. Death is defeated. Love has won. We are so grateful for all that Jesus has done for us and we are humbled by that unconditional love that you have revealed for us through him. Over 2,000 years later, we are still just learning what it means to be your beloved children. We are still discovering more and more about the depth of your love and your desire to walk with us day by day. We are thankful for all the women and men who faced their fears and unbelief and bravely shared the story of resurrection to all who witnessed to the risen Christ then and now. Your love is needed as much as ever today. So help us be the witnesses taking out the good news through our words and actions in our daily living and loving service. We remember those people who live in fear today. May they cling to the hope that love will overcome. Behold those people who face physical, emotional or spiritual pain today. May your peace surround and comfort them. And we pray for those people who have yet to discover the good news of your love. Help us to draw them to you so they may share in our joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers this day. Amen. We're going to close our Easter Sunday morning service. A reminder that we'll sing the first two verses of the super hymn, Thine Be the Glory. We'll then have the benediction and sing as a recessional verse three. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son.
Jesus is not here, he is risen. He is everywhere, all the time. So let us go and share this wonderful news. Let us shout from the rooftop. Let us sing up tenement closes. Let us be bold and brave as we go. May we dwell in the Father's delight, share the news of the risen life of Jesus, and walk with the joy of the Spirit who dwells within us and around us. So go in peace this day. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Thank you.